What's up guys and welcome back to another episode. In this one we're giving the Micra a ton of love. There's a lot to do in this episode so stay tuned and enjoy the show. Those of you who live in Sweden can use the code EJOAUTO10 to get 10% discount at oljemagasinet.se. So without further ado, let's get right to it. The first thing I want to do is to give the engine bay a really good detail for my own well-being and so that it's more enjoyable to work under the hood. And uh, the first thing I do is to remove a couple of old rusty brackets and the heat shield for the exhaust uh, so that I can uh, clean the rust off outside of the car and give them a quick coat of paint. I think that will bring the engine bay, uh, the standards really up and uh, make the overall appearance a lot better. Unfortunately, one of the screws was completely rust welded to the exhaust manifold, so I decided to grind the head off and extract the stud that was left behind. Whenever I do an engine bay detail, I like to start with the underside of the hood and work my way down. So uh, just soaking everything in some uh, degreasers and pre-cleaners and then agitating that with a brush. Unfortunately, there were some discoloration on the underside of the hood that I didn't even get off with a second pass, but I did eventually fix that with some hand polishing that we're gonna see later on. I don't know if this engine bay has ever gotten a proper detail, so to have a good fighting chance against all of the old grease and oil and just overall dirt, I really need to soak everything in a degreaser. So uh, don't be shy here and use a lot. Some places needed further attention, so I went for a second round there. Once the final rinse had been done, I quickly blow dried the engine bay with a leaf blower. And here we can see how effective some hand polishing was against the discoloration on the underside of the hood. There we go, this is how it looks now when it's dried, uh, but I'm far from done. I'm gonna dress all of the plastic so that it looks brand new. Unfortunately, we got some waxy residue here. I think this was applied from the factory. Uh, it's super, super sticky. The degreaser dissolved some of it, but uh, as we can see, uh, some is still left. So, well, I guess it's there for a reason, but it doesn't look very pretty. So I'm gonna try to tidy that up as well. But the most fun thing to do left uh, is to paint the valve cover. I'm actually really excited for that. So let's get right to it. Thank you. 
Don't even try to use a normal screwdriver on these Phillips screws holding down the valve cover. Um, you need to use an impact screwdriver, otherwise you'll just strip the screw head. The valve cover doesn't actually seal around the bolt holes, so you're perfectly safe to pry there. The valve train actually looked pretty good. The first owner of the car really took care of the uh, oil changes and that shows here. However, it was a long time ago since the previous oil change had been done, so a little bit of carbon buildup is uh, no surprise. Good thing I'm replacing the valve cover gasket because this one is definitely on its way out. The PCV valve that attaches to the valve cover was clogged up, so I removed it and gave it a good clean. With the valve cover being all taped up and screwed down to a wooden table, it's time to prep the surface. Unfortunately, I don't have a sandblasting cabinet, so I'm using the next best thing, which is a grinder with a wire wheel attachment. And for the parts that the wire wheel couldn't access, of course I'm prepping that by hand. Now normally I would choose a subtle color such as silver or black, but in this case I thought that red would fit very well along with the rest of the engine bay and the car itself. And also it's a nod back to my very first car which was a Nissan 200SX S13 and that had a red valve cover from factory. The brackets and valve cover are all done, so let's go ahead and mount them back onto the car. In this case, I actually think that the red fit along very well with the rest of the car. And of course, everyone knows that a red valve cover gives you extra 10 horsepowers. This episode is sponsored by oljemagasinet.se. On their website, they can, based on your license plate number, recommend you the engine oils, coolants, and a bunch of spare parts for your specific car. They can also tell you the fluid capacities and engine codes and a bunch of other stuff. And with the code EJOAUTO10, you get 10% discount on the entire website. Right here I'm using stainless steel hardware when refitting the heat shield. Before refitting the coil packs, let's go ahead and replace the spark plugs to the recommended NGK ones.
So here is how the engine bay looks right now. Super happy with the results and I think it's a very big transformation if you compare it to how it looked before. And repainting some of the parts in the engine bay really makes a big difference in my opinion. Next up is to flush out the engine oil and the cooling system. One bottle is good for 6 liters of engine oil. My engine only takes about 3 liters, so I used about half the bottle. Usually I don't use engine flushes, I just uh, do my oil maintenance at regular intervals, but in this case I really wanted to begin with a clean slate. With that being done, let's move on to the next job, and that is to flush out the cooling system. And in order to gain access to the lower radiator hose, I need to remove this plastic shield. And the instruction says to empty out as much as you can from the cooling system, replace that with some demineralized water, and then fill it up with the coolant flush according to your coolant capacity. And then you just run the engine to operating temperature and set the fan to the full heat so that the coolant circulates everywhere. And then I repeated this process with demineralized water four times to get rid of all of the old coolant and the coolant flush. Lastly, I filled it up with a 50-50 mix of some Valvoline coolant. Speaking of flushes, let's do the power steering system. So I just suck up all of the old fluid, fill it back up with some ATF fluid according to the manual, then I start up the car, put the steering wheel lock to lock a couple of times, and then I repeat that process until the fluid comes out clear. Next part to replace is the old fuel filter. And I gotta say, the fuel hoses were pretty stuck on there, but after some struggling off camera, I eventually got them off. I want fresh air in the cabin, so let's go ahead and replace the cabin air filter. And as we can see, someone before me made this job a whole lot easier by cutting this bracket off. I was actually surprised that the filter wasn't in a horrendous state, because usually these are pretty neglected and people tend to overlook them. With the car back up in the air, let's go ahead and replace the anti-roll bar links together with those old worn out bushings. I like to lubricate new rubber bushings with some silicone grease to prevent squeaking noises and to prevent rusting on the mating surfaces.
so there we go the anti roll bar links are replaced on both sides so let's move on to the next thing and that is the braking system and I actually have brand new rotors right here that I got from Olio Magazinet but I'm still waiting for my performance uh, track pads uh, so I will probably do the rotors and pads in the next episode or in one of the future episodes uh, but for now, let's go ahead and replace the brake hoses and the braking fluid in the entire system to a high temperature racing brake fluid. That, according to me, is the first step uh, if you want to look over your brakes before a track day or something like that. Make sure that you have a pad that can handle the temperature. Uh, it's not a bad idea to replace the brake hoses if they're old and uh, dry like mine are and also a brake fluid that can handle high uh, temperatures, that has a high uh, boiling temperature. You can actually come a long way just with those simple modifications. Um, so yeah, but anyways, let's go ahead and replace the brake hoses. Before you even try to break loose the brake line fitting, make sure that the bleed nipple can be undone because you obviously need to bleed the system afterwards. I soaked every connection with some penetrating fluid and some fluid film a couple of days beforehand and you could definitely tell that it made a big difference. With the brake hose being disconnected off the brake caliper, I just couldn't resist on giving them some pain treatment. Once the time comes to replace the rotors and pads, I will paint the caliper holders as well. Both sides in the front are done, let's move along to the rear. Well, on this side, on the left rear, I wasn't as lucky. The brake fitting right here is completely seized, so the brake line just keeps spinning with the fitting. So what I'm gonna have to do is to replace this brake line right here. It goes to the uh, brake portioning valve right there. So, and it, also it's not a bad idea because this brake line is pretty rusty. It's the most rusty brake line on the entire car. So I might as well just go ahead and replace it.
Whenever you open up the brake hydraulics, you definitely need to bleed the system. And I'm also gonna be flushing out all of the old brake fluid with some modal high temperature racing brake fluid. And I'm using my uh, compressor driven vacuum bleeder right here. So I'm starting off with the right rear wheel, working my way up to the left front. So the brakes are done, at least for this video. As I said, I'm still waiting for the track pads to arrive, so I will fit them in a future episode uh, when I do uh, some more uh, track prepping as well. So that'll fit in well with that video. But they're working fine. Um, I've changed the brake fluid to some racing fluid that you saw, uh, bled all four corners, uh, tried out the brakes, no leaks whatsoever. So really happy with that. So uh, there's just one more thing to do in this video and that is to change out the drive belts. So uh, let's go ahead and do that right now. I noticed a very small leak at the front main seal and the harmonic balancer has definitely seen its best days. So that's maybe something I'll have to replace in the future. So both belts are finally on. Uh, I've struggled with this for a very long time because even though I ordered the same size uh, on the belt, they were too short. So I should have ordered just a couple of millimeters extra. Um, but yeah, lesson learned. Uh, what I had to do was to unbolt both the alternator, uh, every uh, fastener of the alternator and every fastener of the power steering pump. Uh, because even if you went full loose on the adjuster, you just there was just no way of getting them on. But they're on now, so let me just tighten everything up and fix the tension and we're all done. And let's not forget to refit the plastic covers that I removed, and of course, if they're out of the car, they got cleaned. So I'm finally done for now. It feels so good to have given this car a full service and just going over a bunch of stuff so that I can feel more confident with it. Um, uh, I actually have a lot of parts that I didn't replace in this video. For example, this uh, CV joint. The reason for that uh, in this particular example is that, well, I'm gonna replace the transmission and it's a perfect opportunity then to replace the CV joint because the axles are going out anyways. And I have a couple of other parts that I didn't replace in this video because, well, you just have to see in the future episode. Uh, I think it will fit better then. Uh, with that being said, the next episode on this car will probably be the full detail video. I'm super excited about that because I just can't stand how the paint is looking right now. It's super scratched up and completely unprotected. And I will also try to tackle this right here. I've uh, got a brand new fender just waiting for me over there in that big box. So I'm gonna replace it and try to repaint it in that very same video. So really excited about that. Uh, never actually done a full panel repaint like that before. So we will have to see how that will turn out. But uh, until then, that's everything for now. Have a really good one, guys. See you then, bye.